This video is gonna show you exactly how I sold over 200 customers onto my white label of high level without ever getting on a sales call and how you can replicate my sales process. So stick around. Now, to kind of catch you up, I started using High Level as a user in early 2022, but I really didn't get around to selling it in early 2023, partly because I really didn't understand what I was actually selling. You see, I came from the affiliate world, and where you basically just create content about a big company and uh, take all the, the traffic that's generated by that content and just point it over to the company, and that's it. Now, I thought when I was gonna be selling High Level, I thought I was gonna be doing more of the same. Turns out I was wrong. And this is a common mistake that I see a lot of beginners make. A lot of people think that when they go ahead and they're gonna put their own name onto high level, they think that they're gonna be competing with high level itself and uh, they're not really sure where they come in. In fact, what you're really doing is you're actually taking high level, paying them a wholesale price, and then you're turning around with your own brand, your own label, your own offer, and you're selling that to your end retail customers. You are your own company with your own offers and your own customer service. And now I want you to take a moment and just internalize that. You are the owner of a software company now. You are the captain now. How it works is that you, the software company, you go and you pay high level $500 a month for the rights to relabel and resell the software at whatever price point that you choose. Essentially what you're doing is you're buying high level at a wholesale price at $500 a month. Then what you're going to do is again, after you put your own brand and you put your own spin on it, you're gonna go find retail customers and they're gonna pay you a minimum of $97 a month. Your customers and the people that you're selling to do not have any direct interaction with high level. Everything is gonna go through you. They pay you directly and they come to you for customer service and tech support. And because of this, you're free to sell your software however you'd like. And I see a lot of beginners though make these common mistakes. They'll just start cold calling random small businesses. They'll use email scrapers to scrape emails and then spam them with a bunch of cold email. Or they'll just simply go into Facebook groups and start blasting people in the DMs with spam untargeted offers. They do all this cold outreach just to get somebody on a call, and then when they finally do get somebody on the call, they make these mistakes. They try to sell all of the features and buttons to every single customer, or they try to be everything to everybody and end up being nothing to no one in the process. Then after making all of these mistakes, they just eventually come to the conclusion that either one, they're not cut out for sales, or two, selling high level doesn't work and neither of those are true. You see, the results of not being able to sell someone are just symptoms of a much larger problem. And the problems are that they don't know how to create a proper offer, they don't know how to generate inbound leads, and they don't know how to sell one to many. All it takes is one offer, one piece of content, and one sales presentation, and you can sell as many customers as you want. Let's go to the whiteboard and break it down. All right, so when it comes to talking about our offer, there's a couple things that we wanna do that are gonna make our offer stand out and that's gonna make our offer convert. Number one, don't build around a feature, build around a framework. And since we're not selling SMMA, we're not selling agency services, we're selling SaaS, what we wanna do then is we wanna change our focus. And our focus is automation. We wanna take one process that every small business owner experiences, and we wanna take a process and automate it. Now you're gonna get the biggest impact and the highest conversions if your process, when you ask a business owner if they did it, they're gonna groan, they're gonna roll their eyes, and if you can do that, that's gonna be awesome because it means they're gonna be willing to pay to never have to do that thing again. Quick example, when I was in the car business selling cars, my manager every once in a while would come to me and ask, hey, did you talk to all of your customers that are in the service lane? And for me, being the salesman focused on the showroom, I said, uh, no, I didn't do it. But it was something that I had to do every single day. I'll tell you what, I would be willing to pay $100 or $200 a month to follow up with those people without ever having to do it myself. And there's a lot of business owners that feel the same way about other processes. Here's some examples. We could call back all of our missed calls, asking sold customers for Google reviews, collecting documents from customers and clients, and responding to Google My Business messages. And this is one of just about two dozen processes that happen in the average small business. What I want you to do is I want you to create a framework around one of these processes and automate it. All the other 300 features that High Level has doesn't matter. You wanna focus on one of these core things. And this is because people make buying decisions based on one thing. Think about the last really big purchase that you made. There's probably a lot of criteria that went into your big purchase and you probably had a couple of different options, but the deciding factor as to which one you rather went with, there was only one thing that made that decision. So you should make all of your selling about that one thing that's gonna make someone tip a decision over to you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our entire sales presentation, our entire sales process, around that one thing that's gonna make them tip their decision, and then we can show them all the 34 other things they get later after they've given us money. 
It's kind of like a reward. Now let's pick one of these processes and make an example offer. Now to demonstrate this concept, let's come up with an example offer around getting automatically getting Google reviews. Again, the process that we're gonna be automating is actually asking every customer who buys to give us a Google review. Most people forget to do this, and if you ask them if they did it or if their employees do it, you're usually gonna get a groan or an eye roll. So in order to do this inside of High Level, this is what we would do. First thing we would have to do is we would actually have to hook up their other Google account to integrate their Google business profile. We would have to set up a workflow pipeline trigger. We'd have to create an automation that actually sent out all of the communication. Depending on how automated we wanna get with the process, we'd have to tune up our conversational AI bot. Then we'd also have to tune up our reputation management links, our Google review links, get those all integrated. And then to compound these efforts, we would actually have to hook up Yext for the customer. Now, as you can see, we just went through about six features on a high level. And what most people would do is they would explain those six features in a big complex presentation and then go, oh, by the way, here's 30 other things that the software can do. And at the end of that presentation, when they ask for the sale, and they're gonna wonder why those people need to think about it or why they can't get people to buy it $197 a month. And that's exactly why we're selling the automated process and not the features of the software. Let me use a skit to show you how I would sell this. Now, Mr. Customer, do you remember to ask every single customer for a Google review? Of course not, no I don't. Well, why not? Don't you know that maxing out your Google reviews is gonna get you more leads from Google and more people are gonna see all the great work that you're doing? I know, I know, but look, half my people can't remember to ask for a review, and what if I get a bad review? That's just gonna set me back. So what you're telling me is that if I can automatically ask every single one of your customers about their experience, only send Google review requests to the people who had a good experience, and then take all of those reviews, automatically post them to Google, post them to your website, and all around the internet, you would pay $197 a month to never think about it again? Now, what did I do there? First thing I did was I started by asking a no question. What does that mean? That's a question where I know the person that I'm asking is going to respond with no. Because a lot of people when talking to a salesperson or a representative from a company are very comfortable saying no. So I ask them a question where no works to my advantage. Now I confirm the scale of the problem because I expose the new fear that they have. So they were worried about someone giving them a bad review. So I actually confirmed that I understood and I heard that. And then after that, I offered an emotional solution. If I could automate all the things that you wished your employees were doing, would you pay X to never have to think about it again? Now, I went to the emotional solution and the emotion of never having to think about Google reviews again, because that's what the person I'm talking to, they can immediately start to internalize what that feels like. They might not be able to visualize what an extra $10,000 a month in their business looks like, but they can certainly understand what it's gonna feel like when they don't have to think about Google reviews again. And for them in that moment, it might be worth $200 a month or $100 a month to automate the Google review process. So what we're doing is we're taking something that's logical, money, and we're linking it to something that is emotional and not tangible, which is peace of mind and knowing never, you never have to think about this nuisance ever again. And here's the thing, it really doesn't matter what business your potential customer is in, whether it be roofing or plumbing or a coffee shop or a restaurant, 99 times out of 100, even if they just get one extra customer a month, their average customer value is gonna be more than the cost is of the software. And now let's talk about the actual content that you need to create to sell your software. And first off, it's 2024, we create video content now, so either get used to making it yourself or be prepared to pay somebody or hire somebody to actually create it for you. It's really easy to start making short form stuff like TikTok and Reels and just know that your first couple are not gonna be that good. I was awful when I first started TikTok. Here's day one. Uh, first, I have to get set up with a couple of tools because you can't just do this business without any kind of software. And the secret to getting better is just to keep doing it. You'll learn from your mistakes, you'll get better, you'll realize different things. It's gonna take a little while. It's gonna take you probably 30 to 50 short videos to actually make a good one. And while I can do an entire series on content strategy, this video is gonna focus on that one piece of content that's gonna drive the bulk of your leads. And this single reel made by one of my business partners brought in over 3,000 leads for free. Let's talk about what makes that possible. Number one, you wanna start off your content figuratively punch them in the face with a problem that they are facing. And you also wanna make it super niche to the fact where the person watching the video goes, oh my God, they're talking about me. Now it's important that you make this piece of content feel native to the, uh, to the platform and you don't want it to feel like an ad. After that, what you wanna do is you wanna remind them of the severity and the size of the problem that you're punching them in the face with. And then you wanna close by explaining the solution and then giving them a call to action as to where they can learn more about the solution. And after they do that, you now have a warm lead that's gonna hear your pitch. Hey, did you ask that person to give us a Google review? I forgot. 
Come on, dude, you know we need those Google reviews. We can get more people found in search and we can have more customers coming through the door and we can make all make more money. Why don't you just get high level instead of worrying about whether or not that I asked? What's high level? It's a software that's gonna completely automate the Google review process so you don't have to worry about whether or not I asked. Do me a favor, go to the free training they're having next week and learn more about it. Now let's talk about the presentation and this can take a couple of forms. Your presentation can either be a video sales letter on a web page, or it can be a live webinar or an evergreen webinar. It doesn't really matter because they're all gonna follow the same framework. And the big picture is that you wanna frame your presentation as a training on how to solve a very niche problem. And you would probably title it so that only your ideal customer is gonna show up. Something like how to get more customers into your local business without increasing your advertising budget. And now let's go break down how that presentation is gonna flow. All right, and to talk about how the presentation should flow, we're back here on the Blackboard and your sales presentation is gonna have a couple of key components. Number one, we're always gonna start off with an intro. Who you are and who do you serve? What this is gonna do is early on in the presentation, it's gonna let the person who's watching determine, oh, I'm supposed to be here or, oh, I'm in the wrong place. I might be wasting my time. So if you go on and talk about, oh, hey, I am from this company, we service small business owners, or we service florists, or we service roofers. If someone of a florist or a roofer or a small business owner is on that particular uh, presentation, they're gonna hear you say that and go, okay, cool, I'm in the right place, this person works with me. That's your intro, that's what it's supposed to do. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna reintroduce the problem. Again, somebody may have seen a piece of content two or three days ago, and they're not even sure what problem they have. What we wanna do is we wanna take that problem all the way and put it right on the front of their mind again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remind people of the problem that we're gonna solve on this particular presentation. Then what we wanna do is we wanna twist the knife a little bit deeper and kinda of add some layers to the initial problem they might be thinking about. And again, to add to this problem, we might bring up that yes, they may have came here because they wanna get more business, but we wanna layer on some of the reasons why they might not be getting business. Ad costs are going up. They're not getting as many clicks, they're not getting as many customers for this amount of ad spend that they're currently spending. We might talk about how their phone is not gonna ring unless they're running an ad. And again, if ad costs are going up, and each time the phone gets missed, it costs them even more money. The next thing we also wanna talk about is how referrals are shaky. A lot of small businesses are built on word of mouth referrals, and we know that those are not reliable, they're not consistent, it ebbs, it flows. And if we could show somebody a process to kind of smooth out the amount of business that comes in the door, they're willing to pay for that. So then once we've outlined this problem, once we've started showing them a problem, now we wanna outline what the solution looks like. And our solution might look something like this. If we get more Google reviews, we're actually gonna rise in search. And when we rise in search, we're actually gonna get more free calls to the business or, for, or more leads through our lead form. And what that's gonna turn into is that's gonna turn into sales and money that didn't cost us any money to obtain. So now what we've done is we've shown them the solution on how they're gonna do that. Now the question in their mind is not, oh, how do I get more business? And now becomes, how do I get more reviews? And in the next part of the presentation, you're gonna tell them that you have a software that automates how to get more reviews and the sale is gonna flow naturally. But in case they're not immediately thinking, oh, I need to get more Google reviews, we're gonna quantify the size of the problem. We're gonna ask them what one job is worth. Then we're gonna ask them, do you think that if you got more reviews on your Google profile and you rose in search, do you think that that amount of impressions would get you at least one more job per month? And 90% of people are gonna say yes. And if they had answered what one job was worth and it was a thousand bucks, when you offer them a hundred dollar a month software to try to get more reviews, they're already doing a 10 X to one return and it's a no brainer to offer. What we're doing here during the presentation is we're trying to set them up and we wanna build up the size of their problem. So when we bring up the cost of the solution, it's down here and people end up buying. Now, if you wanna take this one step further, you wanna go really niche and go after like roofers in Minneapolis, what you might wanna do is look up what the average roofing job in Minneapolis is. And if you got a bunch of Minneapolis roofers on there, they know what one job is worth to them and so do you. So what you could do is you can make a slide here that goes, is one job, is it safe to say that one job is worth, I'm gonna pick a round number here, $10,000. Is it safe to say that if one job is $10,000 on a roof, that it's safe to say that not having your Google reviews is worth $10,000 a month? And they would say, yes, it is. If it's one job and one job's worth $10,000, it's basic simple math that anyone can do. Then in the presentation, once we've isolated the problem that, oh, your Google reviews are costing you X amount of dollars a month, 
Next, the person's mind is gonna start thinking up of objections as to why they don't already have Google reviews. And these are some reasons why someone might think to go, oh, here's why I'm not getting Google reviews. So number one, I always forget to ask. Number two, what if someone leaves me a bad one? I don't wanna ask someone to give me a review because if they give me a bad one, that actually sets me back. And the third one is that there's gonna be a lot of agencies calling them. What if I could, I'm a local agency, I can get you more Google reviews. And they've probably sat down with someone and they're probably a lot of money. So they're going either, I forget to ask, what if they leave a bad one? And oh, agencies cost money, I don't have the money for an agency right now. At this point in the presentation, then we basically address all of these objections and we crush them. So we go, I forget to ask. Well, I'll tell you, what if there was a software that could automatically ask every single customer about their experience? And just to make sure they don't give us a bad one, we only send a review request to the people who had a good experience and we could do it all for less than the cost of one job a month. What you've done now is you've taken all of these objections and you've made them invalid. And at that point, you just make the offer. Well, I can do all of this for only 97 or 197 or whatever your SaaS price is going to be per month and you never have to think about Google reviews again. And then we go on and we actually close the presentation with a call to action. To get started today, go to www.whatever slash whatever.com or click the button below on the page if it's a VSL. If you're doing a live webinar, after you make the offer and tell them to go over to the, uh, over to the webpage to go order, host a Q&A. Invite people to answer their questions because after all, if you've done your job right, you've got 10 or 20 or 50 people who are your ideal customers sitting in the room. Give them a chance to ask questions. Give them a chance to tell you what they don't like because then you can just take the answers, you can take these questions, address all of them on your next presentation, and you're gonna get better. What you also wanna do too, is after you've done the offer, you've done the Q&A, before you hop off, you wanna give people a private channel that they can go ahead and they can actually ask final closing questions on. You can say, make your offer, do your open Q&A, and then close your presentation if it's a live webinar by going, hey, if you guys have any other questions, you're still on the fence, do me a favor, text me at number or email me at email address. And what that's gonna do is gonna take the people who were like really close on the fence, but they want like one or two questions and they might be afraid to ask in public, they're just gonna send you a quick question and if you answer it right, they're probably gonna buy. And once all of this is in place, all it becomes is a game of getting more people to see that presentation and see the offer. And you can do that through either more organic content or you can take your best content and run it as an ad. But that's another video. That's it for this video. If you got value out of it, drop a thumbs up, drop a comment, and if you want to follow along on my journey all the way to 2,000 users, hit the subscribe button and turn the bell on so you don't miss a video. And in the meantime, feel free to check out one of the videos in the corners here, and I'll see you in another one.